Hi, my name is Les O'Reilly, and today I'm going to be taking you on an introduction of your Vision Production Switcher. Our Vision Production Switcher. Let's take a walk around. A Vision Production Switcher, in this case, has two Emily FX buses. You have Emily 2, or your program Emily, and Emily 1. Emily's and MixFX are interchangeable terms, by the way, so you can do that either way. An ME is very simple. You have a preset bus, a program bus, and a key delegation bus. Your preset and program bus work together. So if I want to change from camera 1, which is currently on air, to camera 2, I'd select camera 2, and then be able to cut it, hitting the cut button. My transition area will also allow me to transition key layers, which we'll cover in a moment. The key delegation is what allows me to pick what goes into each of my keyer sources. So by hitting the select button, I can toggle between my keyers, or I can simply select the keyer and the bus is delegating, allowing me to assign whatever source I'd like into that keyer. Okay, so source selection is how we assign what we want to what layer. And the way to think about it is the keyers have a priority. So when I look at that priority, key one is the bottom layer, key two is a layer on top, key three, key four. And those layers all sit on top of what would be that program or background bus. The purpose of another Emily row is so that I can set up an effect like a two box or a chroma key or some element and then put that through Emily 2 underneath as that background allowing me to then layer other things on top of it such as graphics and chroma keys and other elements. Your transition area is how you change what's on air to what's not on air. In this case by just selecting a background I'm just going to switch between camera 2 and what's currently on air. This is how I'm going to perform the transition. It could be a dissolve, a wipe, even a DVE transition, allowing such effects as simple pattern wipes or even simple DVE wipes. So when I want to include a graphic layer, for example, maybe something like my CG, by selecting background and the keyer, in this case, key layer 3. Now when I perform the transition, I would get that camera plus whatever source was assigned to that key layer. You can also perform a cut or automatically transition, so at the defined rate, and finally you can manually perform the transition by moving the fader handle. So that's your transition area. The keyer control area is where we assign the type of keying that we want to perform to each of those key layers. So there are four basic key types. You have an auto select key, which is a linear key. What you see here, where we are taking a graphic that is providing us a video and an alpha source, alpha being a, a black and white image, and it's cutting a hole and layering in the video that you see. There's also things like a self key. A self key is a key type where, similar, what I want to do is adjust my clip and gain And here, I'm removing black from the video. So this is useful when I don't have an alpha signal, but I want to try to eliminate based on a luminance value. So that is how a luma key works. A chroma key works from the standpoint of layering based on taking a chrominance value out. In this case, we're removing the color green. And then you've got preset pattern, which just uses a basic standard pattern to perform this kind of a key layering effect. And finally, you can apply to any of these a fly key or DVE, allowing you to resize and move video around inside of the screen. Further to the right, you've got your global memory system. EMEMs are how we record effects, allowing us to store a configuration or a setup and recall it later. 
So in the case of this box, I could easily store it to a memory and then change my shot, but by recalling it, always bring it back exactly how I had it. You've got your preview row, so this allows me to control my preview monitor, being able to see anything I want inside of it, as well as either of the ME's and its program or its preview. And then finally, your preview with overlay. If I'm looking at the preview with overlay, now I'm able to layer things in like safe titles, the time code of my video server device, even my source ID, as well as a center crosshair, an overall time clock that I can program, and I can even see where my most recent mask is. So again, very useful in aligning all of your elements. Fade to black area. This is a master fade to black, allowing you to fade black over top of your entire show. Positioner, which will follow along with the switcher. So if I select something that's currently set to a DVE, it follows along so that I'm moving the DVE. And then you have a duplicate just flipped so that the T-bars don't align with one another for setting up your upstream effects. Oxbus delegation and selection, making it very easy to select your Oxbuses. These are feeding things like onset monitors. And then finally, your menu control system, which as well is following along. As I selected that DVE, it follows along, and now I can see where it's positioned. I can change to rotation. I can adjust my crops, and, and so on and so forth. So that's kind of just the basic layout of the switcher and what we have to do to be able to use it.